it's another Mega Mail bag. Make sure you stick around. I've got some review items in here. A couple of these things have been a bit trashed in the post. They look like they've been like completely squashed. This one's even worse. Oh, like it's been run over or something. It's concerning. Right, let's get in here and find out how badly damaged this thing is. Okay, double packed, that's promising. Hmm, what's in it? Batteries. Now I don't need them because I've already bought some locally. Alright, so these are the batteries I've got. Uh, there we go, it is. 1420 3.6 volt lithium cells. I ordered these about, I don't know, probably two months ago, but it took a long time to come from China because things have been busy. <laughs> and, um,. Postage has been extremely slow the past couple of months. It's been pretty bad. The reason I had to get these ones from China is because RS components and LMF14 wouldn't ship them to me, believe it or not. But I can get them from China. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I ended up finding one locally. Uh, I don't know why I didn't look locally in the first place. I probably should have done. But yeah, I managed to find one. So I've already put a new battery in the uh, Datron, which is what I originally purchased these for. Actually, I should check the voltage on these, shouldn't I? Make sure it look alright. What do we get? 3.647 3.689 So there's a slight difference between the two, one's slightly better than the other, but that's still fine, they're not exactly flat are they? This will last for years anyway, should sit on the shelf for you know 5-10 years while well, it'd be an issue, but um, the idea of these is going to be test gear and you can use them as backup batteries as long as it's a really minute uh, current draw, you know, you're talking nanoamps kind of thing these will last for years like in the Datrons, I suppose they've got like a five year replacement life, but the battery that was in one of them, it's been in there for 20 years, and it's still going. Right, let's look at this next wonderful example of um, quality postal system. My belief is that these are damaged because it's been sitting around at NZ Post in East Tamaki, because the, um, they got a big backlog there, so I think they've got a big pile of packages and these are probably at the bottom. I've got about 30 packages which are still in transit. Some of these things I ordered three or four months ago and they're still not here yet. They're in New Zealand, they arrived in New Zealand two months ago. Still not got to me yet. So, you know, anyway. Oh, that looks interesting. Okay, so this is an IF amplifier. It's supposed to be a 4 watt, 10 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. 4 watt RF amplifier, apparently. So I already got a different version. This is one definitely is a cheap one, and it's only rated for you know, two and a half watts. Here you go, you can see it there. I did this in a previous mailbag. I haven't tried it out yet. And this one seems much nicer. It's got a nice solid heatsink on there. This seems believable. I believe this will do four watts. Build quality looks really good as well. Actually, that looks really nice. So I'm pretty confident about this one being good. A lot of screws in to take out. Shall I open it up or not? Uh, yeah, I'll open it up. Let's have a look. Right, screws are out. Let's have a look. I haven't lifted the cover off yet. I'm going to find out together what's in there. Wow, quite a bit. 7 8 MO8, so it's an 8 volt re regulator here. So it's got 15 volt in going through a protection diode to a power voltage regulator. Uh, then you've got the supplies going to a final and driver. It's like a two stage system. So this will be a driver coming in, that will be the final amplifier here. Then you've got some Boulon filtering, Boulon filtering, I don't know what you call it anyway. So there's a matching stage basically, and it comes to the output there and through here. Yeah, it looks quite nice actually. A bit of flux around the place, but yeah, a bit of hand soldering. I think it generally looks alright. Looks like it might be in a touch up just over here. But that's fine. I reckon I'll do the job. I'm pleased I got that one. The reason I got this is so I can do calibrations on bits of test gear. So on my signal generators, stuff like that, they only produce, I don't know, maybe 100 milliwatts or something like that, maximum. Maybe slightly more. You know, when you're trying to do a bit of calibration on, say, a power meter, you need a known reference source. This isn't going to be a reference, but what I can do is use this as a transfer standard. So I can do a uh, measurement on a known piece of gear, which I know is pretty much, as far as I know at least, accurate. And then I can transfer the equipment set up onto the other piece of test gear which I'm trying to set up. And then I can calibrate based on what the previous piece of test gear said it was. So I'll make sure they both say the same thing. But first you need to get the power level. 
and this is for my uh, Marconi 2955 which I picked up not long ago, I did a video on that I couldn't calibrate the power meter section because I didn't have a source I could use to do a precise calibration when I had radios, obviously I could transmit on a radio but it didn't give me a, a frequency range I could use so um, this means I can do it across different frequencies as well and I'll just have to use my bird watt meter or something like that and um, calibrate against that because that's pretty trusty I'll have some fun with that at some point Excellent. These are some PCBs from PCB. Sticker, PCB pen, and the PCBs. So pretty small. This is uh, well. I'm going to be doing a video on this thing anyway. It's build. So this will just be a, like, a quick look at it. But we'll have a close look later on when I do the actual build of them. So I've got one of the boards out. The question is, will it work? I've got no idea yet. <laughs> it's the first time I've done a design like this, so I we'll, guess we'll find out. But basically, this is an adapter for doing CB radio work. So the idea is you can get a microphone plug, you put it through the board here, and you wire it up to the socket here. This is obviously allowed for 5-pin. You can do 4-pin as well, just by wiring it slightly differently. I've allowed for that. Um, but this is based on a 5-pin setup on a mic plug. So that comes up to this, and you basically put the board onto the back of this plug. And then you've got jumper here to allow for different configurations so you can change the actual wiring configuration so you can have a bunch of these boards are doing different configurations on the radios so some radios have got one kind of wiring a different radio have different kind of wiring and so you can do it on here based on that you've got a TXRX switch here and there's a B and C socket here for plugging an audio source in for you doing testing so this is for doing radio alignments okay so you can inject an audio signal I mean currently for, well, for years I've been doing it with a a little mic lead, well, a little mic plug on a couple of flying leads, and you clip on some leads with a signal generator. And it's, uh, yeah, I've done it for years that way. I think, well, why do I carry on doing it that way? Why not, just, you know, make a board and make it a bit better? So that's what I've done. And this is what the back of the board looks like here. So we've just got a jumper option on here, which is to link two pins together, which is the common uh, switching common and the audio common. So some radios have a separate one, some don't. So this allows you to link them together. And also got a 100 NF capacitor in there. So yeah, thanks PCB Way for sending these to me at no cost. That was brilliant. Yeah, I'll be doing a video on these as I build them. Still a couple of items to go, so stick around. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. And also, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and thumbs up and that sort of stuff. And if, if you're interested in stuff and you've not been to my channel before, make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon. Because, you know, you may not get another opportunity. You don't see it again. This is just a metal bag, I do a lot of electronics things and repairs and all that. So I'm sure you want to stick around and have a look. I always forget to say that at the beginning of the video. Make sure you subscribe. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up and also have a chat down in the comments as well. Ah, right, okay, I should actually explain about this. Yes, in the previous metal bag, I had purchased some BNC sockets, right, which is what I intended to use on these boards. That's why I got them. However, I might have made a small mistake. And, um,. Yeah, <laughs> I got the footprint wrong. So when I sent these boards in, I looked and I thought, hold on, I'm going to check that footprint and make sure it's the right one. Yeah, it wasn't the right one. So rather than getting the boards redone again, I bought some more sockets which should actually fit on the boards. I hope. Yay, it fits. Excellent. There we go. Sweet. So that's exactly right. So it's just a BNC socket. Nothing too exciting there, but uh, obviously through hole. And that will go on the boards like that. Brilliant. So at least there's a road. So I can start making some boards. There won't be links for these either, unfortunately. Um, it's just OS components, I think it was. Yeah, OS, so I'm sure you can find them yourself if you really need to. So there's the part number, in case you want these particular ones. Makes it a bit easy for you to find, doesn't it? Right, last thing. Don't forget my merch as well. Got merch. Go and check it out. If you're interested in shirts, I've got some pretty cool shirts, I think. I think they're pretty cool, but then I'll design them. Ah, these actually arrived quite quickly. Unlike a whole bunch of other stuff I'm buying. Uh, this is a moisture sensor, soil moisture sensor. So you have to put a battery in here, I'm guessing. Yep, 
battery goes in there. And this is used for my um, weather station, which I did a review on recently, which I got from Banggood at no cost. I purchased these myself. So these are actually things I've purchased. So these are intended to go on the ground outside and they measure the moisture levels. I thought I'd get a couple of these and stick them in a couple of places in the garden, maybe in a couple of flower beds, something like, you know, like there's a vegetable patch, which my wife manages. So I put one in there and one that's at normal ground level. We can do that to hopefully monitor the soil levels, the actual moistures. Where I am, it's quite a high water level, that sort of stuff too, so we'll see how it goes. This might end up rusting. <laughs> but we'll see. It's like it's got just an LED in the back there, actually. I'm not quite sure what else is in there. Don't think there's much else. I think it's just an indicator LED. Maybe there's some other options too. Maybe we can do other stuff too, but potentially, but they haven't done it. I populated. Maybe it's got like a daylight sensor on it as well, which I don't actually need. I just need moisture sensor. If you haven't seen my weather station review, make sure you go and check that out. I'll probably link it down below or something like that. That was quite a good weather station. Really happy with it. I've, I'm you know, looking at it every day. Um, you can even check it remotely. It's pretty brilliant. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, have a chat in the comments, that kind of thing, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, bye.